Well, what is the situation now? I mean, we work at um, here in, Tw- in Twin Falls County at the hospital here mm-hmm. in Twin Falls. Um, yeah. What's the situation with COVID cases? Is it is it is it something that can be maintained? Do you feel like everyone's kind of has a handle on it right now, or is it is it beyond? Has it reached a point where it's kind of beyond capacity? I guess, or you know, what what is the general uh, situation right now in that regard? Um, yeah, so it's so interesting because I feel like it varies from day to day, which you wouldn't think that would be the case. But I, one day it's like, we're overwhelmed. We can't take any more patients. And then the next day we're able to discharge enough patients to get more, you know, to take more patients in. Mm -hmm. Um, Right now where it stands, I believe we are still um, not accepting pediatric patients and they're being sent to Boise Mm -hmm. for anything. Mm-hmm. Um, we have a women's and children's section in the hospital that is being um, used for overflow, basically, of COVID patients. Um, and so I would say we're definitely, I don't want to say we're at like maximum capacity because I don't know. Right. Truthfully, I don't know. I don't, I don't deal with that, but, um, I know our intensive care units and our step down unit is very overwhelmed and um, that in itself can be very scary and dangerous because when those units get overwhelmed with COVID patients, um, we see more critical patients on my floor, Mm -hmm. like on the fourth floor, which if you, if you were talking this time last year, the patients that are on my floor um, and their the level of critical care that they need, you know, they would have definitely been in the ICU, but there's just no room. Mm, mm-hmm. So um, that's one big thing that I've seen and had to adjust to as a nurse, is, as a new nurse, especially as being like, oh, wow, these patients are, you know, critically ill and we can't. We just can't put them downstairs unless they absolutely, you know, right. absolutely have to be. And I don't think that there's a certain, you know, criteria either that makes them um, go downstairs. Or maybe there is that the doctors have. Um, but I, I don't. It's just kind of a game, a guessing game, you know. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I guess that's the big challenge. I imagine the administrative um, people who are working and kind of trying to coordinate all these different things and you know where do i where do we put patients that are infected and you know and it's just like i imagine that's it's it's probably a pretty stressful position to be in to figure out where yeah. to allocate resources and where to put things and yeah it's got to be yeah difficult. i know yeah yeah my heart goes out to those to those people who have to make those kinds of decisions and so i almost feel guilty talking talking for them in some aspects because sure. i don't know what their decision making criteria is for this situation. I just, I can't imagine. I think that they're doing the best that they can with, you know, the resources that they have. So, right. Well, when did you start um, working in this hospital? When did you start nursing and getting into like the, you know, the position you're in right now? What, when did you start that? So I've only actually been at St. Luke's here since, September. (laughs) So (laughs) yeah, I know I have only been there for a short period of time. Um, but prior to that, I was working, um, as a community health nurse. And so that was interesting because that was when COVID all started. And then uh, I was working at a, at a clinic and we had to go to telehealth medicine and, you know, and not explore that whole aspect of healthcare um and oh, yeah. just kind of run around like a chicken with her head cut off <laughs> trying to figure <laughs> out how we can take care of patients safely and so um and then i got into um like covid testing and um helping patients find covid testing and that kind of thing and then i was just over the telehealth i needed like physical you know contact with my patients I just I missed that aspect of nursing 
so much. So then I went to St. Luke's and, um, Mm. yeah, so not too long, but long enough to be like, oh my goodness, this is a big deal. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I'm sure you just stepped into the middle of it, right? Yeah, I did. And, And the other thing was, is when back in September, it was like, COVID was kind of on the downhill slope when we were, you know, learning how to better manage symptoms and better manage everything. And then we had the upward spike Mm -hmm. at the end of September, beginning, middle of October, um, where we're just at maximum capacity. And so. Okay. Well, I mean, can you, that's the thing, if I can egg and take this out of the interview, if it just doesn't work, if you can't answer this question, because Okay. You talked about how you were infected. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, I guess just, uh, what, I don't know how much you can say about this, but just one of the concerns that we're seeing nationally is one that nurses and healthcare workers, doctors are being pushed to just kind of an emotional and physical um, point of, of, of stress. I mean, they're just like mm-hmm. the amount of that's being put on all of your shoulders right now is incredibly I mean, it's, it's incredible. It's, it's, it's hard to really imagine. And, you know, that's kind of one of the breaking points that they're concerned about is just how much is being put on healthcare workers right now and being able to manage the surge of cases. But, you know, one of the major things also is like, we're talking about an infectious virus. We're talking about something that can be spread pretty damn easily. Um, Mm -hmm. And that's one of the major concerns is like, okay, if you're trying to treat people who have this virus, trying to make sure that those healthcare workers don't also get the virus as well. Um, Mm -hmm. I mean, what is your general sense, at least, I mean, just where you work of, of like how capable and able um, the system is in making sure that healthcare workers are, are being properly taken care of and, and not getting infected and, you know, with with all the things that come with that, you know, what is your general sense of, of that situation right now? Yeah. So um, prior to getting hired, they make you do, you know, a training of like proper um, doning and doffing of PPE. And um, I feel like that was really informative and helpful um, for people in my position working on the COVID floor, because um, every time we, we have to um, gown up, every time we go into a, a patient's room mm-hmm. and um we're also highly encouraged to wear N95 masks, but it's not um, mandatory mm. to wear N95 masks. So, um, interesting. Okay. Yeah, that that that's kind of interesting. I'd like to see, you know, like other hospitals and how they're handling that. My and in our um, intensive care units, all the nurses and doctors down there um, wear N95 masks because um, those most of those patients are on an what they consider an aerosolized um, oxygen system. So they're on some sort of oxygen system that causes, you know, the virus to be aerosolized in the air. Mm. Um, So it's extremely important for them to be um, wearing N95 masks and stuff. Right. Uh, And St. Luke's has been really incredible at providing all those things for us and and making sure that we have um, those types of equipment readily available every day, every shift. Um, and so I've never, I was never here if there was an issue, um, with PPE and right. them, you know, not being able to provide that. So, um, I've really appreciated that. And as far as me contracting the virus, I, it's so hard to say if I got it in the hospital or if I got it in the community, I've always been really careful, you know, either at work or yeah. in the community. So yeah. if I had to guess where I contracted it, I mean, I was with, um, I was with a friend who had it and like, they didn't know that they had it. So mm. I'm, I'm guessing that that's, that's where that came from. But yeah, that's... I... sorry, go on. No, no, you're okay. I was just going to say it's, it's such a widespread thing in the community right now that um, a lot of healthcare workers at, at our hospital have been contracting the virus. But again, it's so hard to say if it's in the community or, you know, where it's coming from because we just really truthfully don't know. And yeah, yeah it's so rampant in Twin Falls right now. So 
Yeah, that's the that's the thing that messes with me. Because I remember at the beginning, it was actually interesting. It's like at the very beginning when it first hit and we started to see the first surge, um, the very first wave of it. Like that was when I was the most paranoid, the most concerned. And like, mm-hmm. you know, I think a lot of people felt that way. Like we all, all we kind of, we all kind of became germ phobic, germaphobes, you know, mm-hmm. a little bit. And now mm-hmm. it seems like this surge we're in right now, I mean, we're like, what's technically the second or even maybe even the third surge. I don't even know where we're at with this, but mm-hmm. um, it's actually a lot worse right now. And yeah, we've, yeah. we have this thing of, um, they call it like coronavirus exhaustion or COVID exhaustion or something like this, where it's just like, it's been weighing on everyone's minds for what, however many months now, the better part of a year. And we've kind mm-hmm. of gotten used to the idea of this constant thing of being worried about this constant thing. So our, our guards are lowered a little bit and, yeah. you know, we're just kind of tired of it, right? We're sick of it. And, yeah, you know, like we've all made little exceptions in our, our protocols or our daily, like, uh, you know, things that we do to make sure we don't go into contact with people. We make little, I've done this, you know, I've made little mm-hmm. exceptions like, okay, well, there's these people. I'm pretty sure they're okay. I think I trust that they're okay. I'll go see mm-hmm. them or yeah, we all make these little things. And I mean, I, I can just speak to this has been going on for so long and it's, it's like, yeah, it's really, I don't know. It's just really hard. It's really hard to know what to do right now. Aside mm-hmm. from just the really obvious, like things that we've been told to do since the beginning, you know? Yeah. But, um, yeah, I, I, I... I know as humans, we are naturally adaptive creatures, right? So yeah. we just have adapted to this um, chaos that's going on around us. Yeah. And I don't remember who I was listening to. It was another podcast, but um, he was talking about how um, our parasympathetic nervous system is triggering these stress responses within us, right? So our cortisol levels are just constantly being spiked because um, back when we were, you know, our ancestors had, you know, tigers to be scared of, (laughs) um, they would, you know, they would have this uh, primitive response and their bodies going off. But now the same primitive response that you and I have that we share with our ancestors is um, now you're the tiger and, um, yeah. You know, the person at the grocery store is a tiger. Your mom's a tiger. And not only that, but um, the scariest thing I think for most people is that uh, all these tigers essentially around you can cause you to maybe give it to your parents or give it to your grandparents. Yeah. Um, right. So we're just constantly in this like fight or flight stage and and humans were like starting to adapt to that, which is I think like the first time in probably human history we've ever adapted to something like that. And so yeah. it's really odd because we don't know what to do, right? Because we are sick of it. Like you're saying, we don't know what to do. Yeah. <laughs> you're just at a yeah. loss because we're sick of it. And we, like you said, we're making little exceptions here and there. But yeah, one of the other things is that healthcare workers – in the hospital, we can't make exceptions. Um, yeah, we know for a fact that this patient has COVID, and I we're going in the room. You know, we can't make like in a little exception. Um, we have to be as careful as we can be when we go into the rooms, and it is time consuming. It is. We've done like little um, studies, I guess, at the hospital just me and um, this other doctor and he was talking about how it takes probably 10 to 20 extra minutes um, to going into a patient's room to don't end off PPE appropriately. And Mm so Mm -hmm. that's a big chunk of time, especially as a nurse, you know, I have to, we have to give medications at the right times. And um, so up there, it's just a whole nother game of um, thinking critically and thinking, you know, okay, I'm going into this room. What is everything I need for the next hour, possibly? You know, I have to remember to bring it in with me. Or yeah, um, one of the other really nice things I've noticed um, is if you forget something in a room, um, sometimes you can pop your head out the door and say, hey, like, can you bring me this to somebody? 
Mm. And, you know, back in the day, anybody less than a, a certified nursing assistant degree wouldn't grab you anything. But now, you know, like the doctors are grabbing you stuff if you need it or mm. the nurse practitioners. And so I think at least on our floor, that's one of the nice ways we've adapted to mm. this change. And um, we've just come together to be like, hey, we're all in this together. And right. And I really to end that conversation or that topic on a high note, I've really enjoyed um, that aspect of it is us on the on a level playing field. So yeah, well, I imagine in in any situation where everybody's, I mean, it, it, that kind of thing you're explaining can be extended to so many different circumstances and contexts where people are just like, look, we're in a pretty extraordinary situation here. We kind of have mm-hmm. to rethink of how power dynamics are are you know how the power dynamics in our little group is is working and and we have to think about like how we can all just get through this in the most efficient and and best way possible and that extends to doctors and nurses and other healthcare workers just as much as it would to any other group of people doing other types of things it's just the nature right. of the crisis you know um, yeah yeah hmm. well um so this is the thing, you know, we wanted to, I guess, get into a bit is, well, I mean, we actually, let me just finish this part up. Um, I guess I would just ask you, you know, we're talking about community spread here in this area. I mean, what do you, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how comfortable you feel making predictions or like just sort of anticipating mm-hmm. what's going to happen. I mean, we just had Thanksgiving last week. Um, mm-hmm. Millions of people were flying to go visit family and, you know, we had public health officials here in the U S saying, please don't do that. Just try to not do that, please. <laughs> like right now, <laughs> like we're in this huge surge. Like, can you just not do that? Um, mm. And I mean, they're anticipating that that numbers will just spike again in the coming mm-hmm. weeks. I mean, is that your general feeling as well? Yeah. Yeah. I definitely think there's a sense of us uh, like bracing ourselves for, this next wave after Thanksgiving and Christmas and winter Mm. alongside with, you know, the flu and all the other things that come with the winter. Yeah. So I do think we're definitely bracing ourselves for that and preparing. So I I predict we'll be pretty busy 